It's the Fans Hobby MB16 Lightning Eagle, otherwise known as Thunderclash. And we're gonna be taking a look at this guy today, but we're not only looking at him. This is a versus review. So we have the original Thunderclash, the European leader of the Turbo Masters, and we're gonna be putting him up against the Fans Hobby, more of a masterpiece edition. And you get to look at both of them and see which one you like better or both. Be right back. So Thunder Clash has always been kind of one of my favorites. I discovered him after I got all the Machine Wars figures of which they made an Optimus Prime slight retool remold of this guy, mainly the trailer, and you know, avoided using cold plastic. But when I found out about this guy, I thought it was really cool because it's nice to have another leader, another truck, that is not Optimus Prime. But we are gonna take a look first at the fans hobby. Because this has three modes, this only has two. So mode, 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 mode. Let's break this out. Now there is a Machine Wars Prime version of this, which I did not choose to get. One of the reasons I usually don't go for the more expensive third party is because, well, what do you do if it's broken? It's a lot more of a pain in the ass to get returns and refunds and all that stuff when it's a third party toy, so. But in this case, I decided it was worth it. This guy was $195. He's got accessories and he is one big mother. Now, I've already taken him out because uh, I wanted to make sure I could transform him properly for you. And I have to say that the instructions on this guy were actually really, really good. And the box is cool too. I mean, it is very reminiscent of the Transformers, which, you know, it's from fans. And it looks a lot like the European G1 Turbo Master box. I think I had it at one point, but I don't know if I do anymore. But it's still a cool box. But let's take a look at this figure. Here he is in his plastic. Very nice trailer and cab. Here is the cab. Here is the trailer. And yes, they go together. Now to hook them together, you have this little slot here and you put it onto the trailer and you can roll them. I'm not thrilled with the slot. It's not the best. I mean, you turn and he falls off. That's the only way I see to put him on. So that part, not the best. And I already transformed him once and I think I put him back in the right configuration, but who knows, it's me, I'm human. Now he comes with accessories such as these huge missile launchers. I've already put the missiles in and I gotta say, they're like bullets, if I can get them to launch. There we go. It actually looks like a bullet. You load it in, it's got a very powerful spring in there. So they can probably go quite a distance. I don't wanna shoot it across the room. I have cats. This one seems to be stuck in there. I wasn't really gonna launch them anyway, but there's a minus. Now, putting them on the trailer, it looks like you just slide them on here which doesn't hold them very securely. I mean, securely enough, but there. It's a little bit better now because I had the, the wheels a little bit higher than they should have been. But still, as soon as you turn him, that goes away. He also has a gun that he uses in his various modes, and that can go on the trailer right here. So he's a very well-armed, very cool looking truck. Just try to avoid turning him too much. He goes forward and that's what he does. But if you remove the trailer and you just push him, he rolls very nicely, very nicely. Now, let's take a look at the trailer and the deco. Turntable of doom here. So he is a very nice looking, though like the European one that came, that inspired this, it's kind of uh, garish. You know, all the different colors, the pink windshield, the pink headlights, the green, whatever these are in the back, <laughs> the blue, the red, the white, the gold. It's a lot of different colors, but gold uh, gold grill, but he's very cool. He's got mirrors, very shiny smokestacks, and on the top he has like, I guess, a lightning eagle, just like on Thunderclash. So a cool looking vehicle. It doesn't really show anything more that you can do with him in his vehicle mode. The trailer, it's a very nice trailer. It's rather large, but he's got the missile launchers, he's got the gun in the center there, kind of reminiscent of Optimus Prime with the design going down the side. 
And things generally snap in pretty well, though I'm noticing this rear part of the trailer isn't snapping in quite as well as it should, but still a very cool looking transformer. The trailer does not open up in the back, which is a shame. Still, very cool trailer and it does other stuff, so we'll get into that. But let's bring out the original, who also you can't turn very well, but then again, you can kind of force them to turn. Let's take a look at the trailer first. Now this is 100% original. I don't think they've made any counterfeit reissues of these guys, only third party new versions. You can see he's also garishly colored. He's got the pink windshield. He's got the same gold grill, same pink, but he's also got turn signals that are, they look orange. Red here, the gold plastic, which I'm extremely careful of. This is an original, has not broken as of yet, but that could change. Now, whereas this one has nice rubber wheels, this one has plastic gray wheels. Still, there's something about the original. Now the trailer, which I apologize, is a little dusty, has the same gray wheels. It's a little garishly colored, as you can see. It has even more of an Optimus Prime look that says Transformers, so that doesn't really do the robots in disguise thing very well. You can mount his gun in the front. He's got the two missile launchers. Now these missile launchers, um, are a little bit different, which we're gonna talk about in just a second. I did wanna point out that he has this scope here. Now, Thunderclash was leader of the Turbo Masters and they all had like scope things and they were against the Predators who also had scope things. So he has a scope thing on the back here. But his missiles are these things, which also kind of look like plastic bullets. Not quite as much because they're garishly yellow. But when you press this button right here, it goes down and you have gravity fed missiles. This was retooled in Machine Wars Optimus Prime, I guess because they didn't like the gravity fed and they didn't like having to pull back to load in a missile and then launch it. It launches pretty good. The missiles that uh, came with Optimus Prime, Machine Wars Optimus Prime, were just regular missiles. They retooled this whole area just to put those missiles in. But these, yeah, quite the launch capability. So there he is in battle mode. Well, his trailer in battle mode and the back of the trailer, you can kind of open it and put a little something in there, but generally I don't. But it's nice to have that option. I mean, you could load missiles in there. But one thing about the gravity fed situation is that moving it around makes a mess. So, but there you have it, the original and his trailer. Put these aside for the moment, we may need them later. Now to compare them, here is the original. And as you can see, there's a huge size difference between him and the fans hobby MB-16 Lightning Eagle. From the end of the trailer to the end of the cab, this guy is beep, 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 16 and three quarter inches. Whereas this one, beep, 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 is about 10 and kind of five eighths. But rolling wise, they both roll pretty well. They are both cool looking tractor trailers. And again, the fact that it's not an Optimus Prime and it's a leader of an Autobot group, is kind of cool. All right, put the trailers aside and you can see the cab for this one is about seven and three quarter inches in length. Whereas this one is six. That's still similar deco, very cool. It's a great homage, the Vans Hobby one. But there is of course something about the original which the trailer looks, or the cab rather, on the original looks a little bit more Cybertronian, futuristic, that type of thing. Still, very cool. All right, let's take a look at the cab robot modes. It may be mode, 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 mode because there's a accessory, but let's get him into his robot mode. <laughs> I am Thunderclash, leader of the Turbo Masters. Thunder, thunder, thunderclash, ho! Oh, okay, I'm mixing up my fandoms. So there he is in his robot mode. Lightning Eagle! As you can see, he's got the chest shield with the symbol. Face looks very similar to the original and we'll compare that in a moment. The gun, the gun actually has a little slot that slides in, so it's very secure in his hand. Doesn't have a ton of back kibble, though of course you can tell that he's a truck by looking at the back. It's a very clever transformation. It's not too complicated and the instructions are, as I said, excellent. He is still garish in his coloration, but 
he's a very neat bot. And he's, of course, he's got the nice smokestacks in the back that are nice, shiny, and chromey. All right, let's go over some poseability. So, first of all, he does have ankle swivels. So you can actually put him in a very wide stance, but his feet can lay flat. They actually go all the way to the side. I don't think you're gonna need it to go quite that far, but still, it's good to have the option. Full Jean-Claude Van Damme, can he do it? Yes, he can. And uh, because of the wheels, he can kind of go from side to side, but very, very, very flexible. He can kick forward. Now he's got these little kind of hip covers. You can move them out of the way so he can really kick forward, but just be aware of those. He can kick back, not quite as far, but obviously he can bend his knee. Side kicks are not a problem. Swiveling is very nice. And as you already saw, he can bend his knee, he can move it out to the side, put his right foot in, he can put his right foot out, he can put his right foot in and shake it all about. So very good on the lower part. He can twist at the waist. You have to kind of lean him forward if you want him to go all the way around. And he kind of has the ability to bow. So that's a nice thing. That is some joints up in here. So he can actually look down and look up. So very cool thus far. The arms can go all the way around. Nice ratchet sound. Not thought about ratchet. You can kind of put the arms out to the side. He's got these uh, armpit joints, but you can put the arm out to the side so you can reveal his armpit pseudo hair. Bends at the elbow, swivels all the way around. The fists twist and the fingers open. So he's got articulation there. They don't open that far, but far enough that it's noticeable. And he can have his hands just not in a normal, just boring fist mode. The head can turn all the way around. And overall, he's really, really cool and poseable. Now, apparently, there are some things that you might be able to do. Now, I thought perhaps you could attach these in this mode, but it doesn't look like there's any instructions for that and it doesn't show it on the box, but still a very cool robot, very cool gun. You could make it look a little more intimidating by putting that out as like a magazine almost, but it doesn't need it. So there he is. We're gonna get into the uh, current mode in just a moment. Let's bring out the original Thunderclash. Now his transformation, pretty simple. If you happen to have a Machine Wars Optimus Prime, it's the same transformation. Very quick and easy. And there he is in robot mode. And he does have a gun, which has a small peg and a larger peg, so it can fit into his hand. And you can see him there, very similar in design. He does have light piping for his eyes, so if the light hits right, his eyes will glow, kind of pink. He's got the sides, or the, rather the front of the cab behind his arms, almost gives him wings. He's a very cool looking figure. I've enjoyed this guy and I enjoy Machine Wars Optimus Prime, even if he does have, you know, a mouth, but he's a very cool version of Optimus Prime as well. Now with this guy, posability wise, well, the legs aren't going nowhere. You can kind of point the toes, but why would you do that? You can lean him back, but he's gonna fall. The arms can go up and the arms can go down. The arms go up, the arms go down. I lift it up, I put it back down. That's pretty much it for the posability. The head does not turn. So posability wise, this guy is your basic G1 brick. But still a very cool figure. Glad I have him in my collection. I do like the fact again that he is a Autobot that leads other Autobots, but is not Optimus Prime. I mean, they've tried to put others in Optimus Prime's place, Rodimus Prime and Bumblebee and stuff, but I don't think it works as well. But Thunderclash, I would love to see like a mini series of him leading the Turbo Masters and maybe the Autobot Rescue Force as well on special missions to defeat the Decepticons. Call me Hasbro, I got ideas. In fact, I got an epic idea that would blow your socks off. Lots of ideas, so call me. But there he is. Now comparison wise, obviously Lightning Eagle is much larger, much, much larger. He stands on his feet, but height wise he's about nine and a quarter inches tall. That's pretty tall for a toy transformer. 
Whereas this guy is six inches tall. And I mean, you can see this one's much more bulky. You can see comparisons of the back there. This has a little bit more, well, they're about even in obvious, we change it to a truck because he's got the sides there and he's got it all in the center. But obviously a much more um, intimidating weapon there. And this one I have to be careful of because it's not broken yet, but it is gold plastic. It's from the era of the gold plastic syndrome. So I am gentle with it. Still very cool robots. Now the trailers, let's take a look here. This changes into a kind of turret for Lightning Eagle. So we're gonna go ahead and change it into that. So there is the trailer in the turret mode. And as you can see with him on the back, he's got handles that he can hold on to and basically fire. It is huge. Let's see if it will fit onto the turntable of doom. And if I can actually get a good shot of it, kind of, I'm gonna be very careful. It doesn't fit fully on there. So I'm gonna have to use this camera to just basically show you and slowly slide it around. But as you can see, he's on this elevated turret and he can blast. Now, can this turret move all that much? Not really. I mean, this comes off pretty easily. It pops on there, but it's pretty much what you see is what you get. It's a nice thing to put up in like a, a battlefield situation, but the turret mode doesn't thrill me that much. It never thrilled me. This is why I rarely use it even on the original. Still, it has that capability. It's a pretty cool feature, but if you look in here, between his legs, you can see the big head. We're gonna talk about real soon. But this thing with him on it, it's like 14, 15 inches and it falls apart real easy. So we're gonna just put that aside for now. I'm really looking forward to combined mode. Turret mode is just not all that thrilling, but you know, kind of cool. I adjusted the legs a little bit, so he's pointing higher at least. All right, let's put this carefully over here and hope it does not fall over. As we get out, the original trailer, which also has a bit of a turret mode. Now I do have to say the original turret mode is actually, I think a little easier and a little more intimidating. I mean, that thing is big, but it has been a while since I have put him in this mode. So let me just double check. I forgot a piece. So there he is. I mean, it's kind of cool, but again, I'm not a big fan, but he's got this huge gun here, which is nice, doesn't shoot anything. You can mount his handgun right here and you can put the gravity fed missiles and fire them out of here if you want. Putting those in there, even though they won't really fire, makes it a little more intimidating. He's got these things here to kind of stabilize, but even then he's kind of crooked. Here we go, I think that's better. It's a turret mode, but it's not that exciting. But he can hold on to the uh, handles very well. He's got a nice platform to stand on. So there it is, the original G1 turret mode. And no head, probably because he doesn't have a combined mode, which is really cool. And that's what we're gonna take a look at next. Oh, but I should do side by side. Get back here. But actually the turret modes are not that uh, different in size as far as height. Um, this one's obviously bulkier, but he's almost, I don't really wanna, should I lay him down? Hmm. It's like 13 inches tall. So they're actually kind of similar in height, similar in uh, function, but yeah, neither one is a big thrill for me. All right, dude, you can get down from that ridiculous perch. Optimus Prime also has, from Machine Wars also has this mode, just without the gravity fed missiles. And because of this mode, that's why occasionally you will find parts of trailers of Machine Wars Optimus Prime, either the top or the bottom, or Thunder Clash. Let's say la vie. All right, combined mode. Don't fall over. This is your time to shine. No, I forgot when I put him in robot mode, I forgot to flip that out. I don't know how I missed that direction. Couldn't really notice it because the shield is mostly covering it. My bad. All right, so there he is in his combined mode. I have to say the complexity of the transformation, I mean, the instructions are good, definitely good. But this guy, you have to be very exacting with everything you put into place. This is definitely for an adult collector, but he's one cool looking motherfucker. But uh, yeah, this is not something that you would necessarily want to 
play with, like transforming them back and forth because it would take you much longer than it ever took me in the old days when I'm like, Autobots transform. And then you'd spend like half an hour transforming all your Autobots and then you'd roll them to the battlefield and then it'd be like, transform and attack. And then you'd have to transform them all back for another half an hour. This guy would take you probably about 20 minutes to a half an hour to transform to each mode. So yeah, definitely for the adult collector, very cool looking figure. As you can see, I put the gun in his hand and the missile launchers on his shoulders. You can actually take the missile launchers and put those in his hands instead. So he's got two huge honking cannons and then take his gun and attach it to his back. So he's got some options. Now, posability for this guy, which I'm gonna be very careful because he is a merged guy. But the ratcheted joints, I have to say, allow him to maneuver his weapons into all kinds of positions. Now, he can almost, but not quite do a full Jean-Claude Van Damme. He does have ankle swivels, so you can have him in a wider stance. He's got these plates in front here, but because of the kibble on his leg, he can't kick forward all that much. Back, he does better. And of course, side, he can do a nice sidekick. He can do a full split, just not a toes up Jean-Claude Van Damme. He does have some nice twisting at the waist. You can go all the way around. Oh, the gun came off, so I'll just put that back on. His arms can go all the way around. Obviously, he bends at the elbow. He has a nice swivel. The head can turn all the way around. So compared to someone like Power Master Optimus Prime G1 version, he's definitely <laughs> much better. And since this guy doesn't have a combined mode, oh, you can see the size there. This one's much, much bigger. He's about 13 inches tall, so good size. Bigger than most G1 combiners. And yeah, I wouldn't want to get on his bad side. Definitely give Power Master Optimus Prime a run for his money. Oh, the legs swivel as well. I don't know that I mentioned that. So that is good. So you can put him in a number of dynamic poses. So a very cool and poseable figure. Most of the things that when you get him in the right spot, pop in to lock him into this mode. Some things are very, very difficult to pop. Like he's got two slots on his chest that these toes go onto. Luckily, it looks like they're in there right now but those can pop very easily out. Still gorgeous, definitely like him. I will probably keep him in this mode and maybe put him next to <laughs> his much smaller inspiration from the G1. And to be honest, I like him with the missile launchers on his back. So that's the mode that I would go with. Now this guy cost me $195, which is a lot more than I usually pay for non-official Transformers. Just again, because if there was something wrong, and I get a lot of this stuff from AliExpress, a lot of this type of stuff comes out of China, processing returns and getting refunds can be a little more difficult. Still, I took a chance, it was worth it. I will put a link in the description to this guy. A very cool Euro Transformer. But there is something to be said for the original. There's no combined mode, but still, G1 has a quality of its own. Even though this one does have gold plastic, which you obviously need to be very careful of if you manage to get one of these. You wanna be extremely careful that you don't break that because uh, I've had a few G2 Slingshot in particular that have had, uh, let's just say, extremely bad <laughs> crumbling situations. But the Vans Toys does not seem to suffer from any of those. They've fixed the uh, plastic, so there you have it. The Fan Toys Lightning Eagle versus Thunderclash, the original G1 leader of the Turbo Masters. I really wish they had Turbo Masters in the scale so I could have the whole team. But unfortunately, it doesn't seem like they've gone that route. It'd also be nice to have Rotorstorm, who is also one of the Turbo Masters, but uh, what can you do? Well, there you have it, and I really hope you're enjoying these videos as much as I enjoy making them. And while you're deciding which one of these is better, which it's pretty clear if you like posability, but like I said, some things have a charm all their own. 
But while you're mulling these guys over and deciding if you'd like to get one or both for your collection, you can check out this video over here, which is a European team that actually didn't have names, the Autobot Rescue Force. Check those guys out, and we will see you next time. As always, have fun and good hunting.